Boing. Yes. I know that noise. Right. That means we've started. Okay. All right. Tell me, to, so to start, tell me your name, your age, if you're comfortable, what your art form is, and where you live. My name is Tom Martinelli. I am 66 years old. Uh, I am a painter, and I live in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Okay. Tom, tell me something that is a point of inspiration which has greatly influenced your creative life. This could be a piece of art in your art form. It could be a person. It could be anything which has generally influenced your art. Hmm. I know it's a simple question, but I have to think about this for a minute. Mm -hmm. My first response, and it might, it might not be my only response, I think probably um, meditation experiences are, are, are kind of high on the list. Um, because often I think when I work, the things I make, uh, that's almost a reference point, you know, that, that, that um, arena where one is in relationship with their mind, where things sort of stop for a little while maybe. Um, and the thoughts don't become as important as sort of the substrata. This is something that I look for in everything, really, in every experience, in every sense of myself. And in a way, you know, I think, um, you know, early on I might not have articulated it this way, but I think in a way that was something that really um, affected me about a lot of art that I looked at early on that, you know, the way it sort of allowed you to um, uh, kind of peel a few layers off yourself and, and, and get to a, a space that was a little bit clear and open. Um, I've had that experience early on, you know, like Cezanne's and Matisse's and, uh, and I think that's something, you know, it's, it's a little more abstract, it's not concrete, but it's a sense of um, clearing away stuff that interferes uh, with um, or clouds vision or perception. Um, it can be expressed in all different ways. It's, it's sort of a vague thing to say. Um, but I, I like Agnes Martin is a very good example of that. You know, in a way, you sort of can't just walk up to those and get them. You have to... I had a conversation recently with someone who, who described it as having to peel away layers of yourself in order to sort of be with it. And I think that that's true. And that's, um, that's a range or a level of experience that I, I like and feel I need and want. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that always plays into everything I make in my relationship with what I make. Mm. Um, so I guess that's what can say, that would be an inspiration, wouldn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm curious about that if I just uh, tease this out a little bit sure. more with you. Sure. Um, so you're a mature art, a mature and maturing artist because we're always changing as artists throughout. Nothing is mm -hmm. static ever. Um, and we're always young and old at the same time. When you, when you talk about this meditation practice being a, a sort of a prism through which you create art now, and you're aware of it now, of course. How do you see your older work, your work as a young artist? Uh, do you look at it through that reference, or do you just kind of, you know, that's then and this is now? You know, actually, I see, I definitely see a continuity. Even though I couldn't articulate or had no idea of that frame of reference, you know, I remember being early in school, uh, like as an undergrad, I remember used to make these kind of maximal abstract paintings. I think I thought that was the thing to do. You put a lot of stuff in there, but I always remember savoring and hiding the simplest of things that just had a sort of a clean, um, I don't want to say like they were an, a single impulse, but they were uh, almost like a single utterance and on some level, knowing that that was enough and that was clear. Mm. Uh, so there was always a sort of an attraction, you could call it, or um, a sort of a sense that um, 
deacquisitioning of stuff in a painting led me to something that 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 uh, that was important to me mm -hmm. that felt grounding. So I would never have articulated. I had no idea, mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't really have the. Uh, you know, I wasn't able to follow that back then. Mm -hmm. I was in school, and I was, you know, seeing all this stuff and, and being influenced by a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. But I think that that tendency was always there. You know, always that sort of directing attention towards internal processes mm -hmm. was always in the cards for me. Um, uh, you know, even, you know, it's like, you know, even, uh, I, I never like to use the word spiritual that much because that's a loaded word. <laughs> and here we are in Santa Fe where it has associations off the chart, you know, and it's not really, you know, it says something, but there was always that feeling of, um, that there's a depth here somewhere and somehow this, this thing you make can reflect it. Mm -hmm. Um, wonderful. Oh, wow. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the second question is, where you, when you're in the process of making your art and things are going very well, what does that feel like in the body center? What does that feel like in the body? Uh, curious question. Um, I'm not sure I could answer that in the moment. Um, I don't know because in a way I don't um, I'm not sure how to answer that you know I, I don't know that that's uh, I don't know you know why don't we do the, the next question <laughs> let me just ask a further question about that if you don't mind which I think might might uh, uh, specify it a little bit in the sense that when things are going very well, well, we always look in process of, oh, today's going well, tomorrow's, you know, yesterday didn't go so well. Uh -huh. Are, you know, some artists, some generalized, you know, artists, every, every, every art form may not be particularly aware of that. And that's fine. In other words, if you're coming up at a loss, that is, that's, I've, I've experienced that before in interviewing people. However, I just wonder if thinking, a, you know, for lack of a better term, a good day, a bad day, a good day oft times has a body release within it, which allows the mind and the body to be connected so that, you know, for lack of a better word, the mm -hmm. bow stroke can be, you know, exactly what you want. Does that help at all? Well, I know what you're saying, uh, but I don't really relate to it that way. And I'm not sure that's the, uh, I could answer that in a way that would, um, that would do, you know, that would complement the way you're framing it. Um, do you want to frame it in a different well, way? a good day, um, a good day is just feeling like, that I've connected. And that might not necessarily be a physical thing. Mm -hmm. It might have a physical component. In fact, it probably does. Mm -hmm. But I'm not usually that attentive to the physical component. Mm -hmm. You know, but that's also not true either because I feel things very tactily when I work. And part of the making a good decision or a good move on something has, has a tactile quality to it. In other words, um, my hand just puts the paint on in the right way. I don't know the pressure, the speed, the direction, the viscosity. And when that happens, it's not so much that I feel it, but it's just kind of a knowing that it's the right. It's just like, okay. And you know, even if it doesn't make sense looking at it, I can leave that thing and feel kind of complete. Um, that's sort of, I know that's, that's sort of a little fuzzy. So it's not like I feel like a, a release. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't frame it as a release of any kind mm -hmm. or even necessarily a shifting to body attention. Mm -hmm. The body attention is there through it. The body attention often focuses on sense of touch as I'm making something. Mm -hmm. um, 
and somehow if all those coordinates are in sync there's a satisfaction after it that that uh that makes for a good day mm -hmm. um, and the good day doesn't necessarily reflect whether the work itself is good you know in a way um and i'm always practicing this even into the present time where uh, I can make something, there is that sense of uh, touch and mind and movement and everything being in sync. And I have no idea the thing I made. In the past, I've, I might say, oh my God, this really sucks. I better get rid of this before someone sees it. Uh, I've come to realize that you know, I might not even like it immediately, uh, but uh, I might later on. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not the I'm not the best judge. I I can judge again when the tactility thing is, when everything is um, uh, synchronized in some way, and that experience is good. Uh, I can't necessarily judge the the physical outcome of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I usually have learned to wait. You know. Uh, right. So. Yeah, it's a kind of a tricky question for a, a, tricky... Fine, a fine artist because uh, in other art forms that I've, uh, people that I've uh, interviewed, such as actors, dancers, and musicians, this is a, these are physical yeah, yeah. art forms in their very nature. Yeah. And so when things fall away, you know, of the, of the conscious mind, yeah. that other stuff comes up. Yeah. So you're, you know, but that was a very, that, that answer was just uh, very enlightening to me. But what I do know is, um, whether it's physical, tactile, or not, I know that my mind isn't the best judge of the outcome of that thing. That I'm certain about. Yes. Um, I can't tell you how many things I've dumped that I remember clearly years later and thought, you know, you know, my mind doesn't judge well all the time. That doesn't necessarily put everything in the realm of the physical, but it puts things in the realm of maybe the mind isn't the best judge always. Right. Interesting. Very good. <laughs> I can relate 1,000%. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so we'll go to the third question now, Tom. Um, and this is an interesting question now. It's, it's always an interesting question for the arts because we always need to know this answer from as many artists as possible because it's an eter eternal question and that artists are, you know, struggle against in the world, being in the world all the time. And even now, because we're in the time of COVID right now and there is a world pandemic going on. The question is, why does the world need art? Why do we need what you do? now more than ever well you know I, i've never had a really kind of snappy answer for that not asking for snappy yeah yeah well you're not going to get one <laughs> so, <laughs> forget that yes sir <laughs> no snappy you know first off um not as a negativity but i'm never quite sure what the world needs mm -hmm. really i i don't really know um what the world needs. Could I say, how can the world benefit? In other words, you're doing this for your entire life. You're making art your entire adult life. Yeah. You know, there's a reason for that. Ultimately, you have to believe that what you're putting out is creating something that exists in the world that never did before. And someone will look at it and be changed. Why does the world need this? Well, you've just lumped a bunch of things into one sentence. Right. Um, um, I don't know that people will be changed. I mean, in a way, that doesn't matter. He, oh, okay, let me, let me back up. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I was going to say that doesn't matter. I don't think about those things. Um, what I'm sure about is that I'm a representative for a certain percentage of the human population. You know, like when you're at like a, a talk in an, a, an auditorium and somebody asks the stupid question and like a third of the audience is so relieved that somebody asked the stupid question because they had the stupid question too. Not really a stupid question, but 
I mean, everyone represents a certain chunk of the world. So I know when I make a good painting, uh, and I'm sure it's a good painting, um, I do have sort of uh, a, a feeling that it's a good thing this thing exists. It's a good thing. If no one sees it, I mean, I'm not talking about, I, it, it's not even that it actually, you know, is participates in interacting with the world. If it's good for me, it means it's good for a certain chunk of the world, no matter how that articulates or whether it does. So in a way, I'm pretty confident with that. You know, I, I don't really, uh, you know, it's not like I have a, a plan. I'm going to make the world a better, I mean, I have no fucking idea how to make the world a better place. I mean, the world right now, we we're talking before, I'm feeling very, um, uh, as many of us are, very sad and depressed on how things are going. You know, it's, it's not looking good to me. Um, so I don't really, you know, I don't know the value of art. I don't know the value of things people make. I mean, I've been affected by the smallest of things, you know, and so it's not like a scale training. You know, I remember once I was sitting with my niece and she was really young and she was painting, uh, you know, like when you get done with a roll of toilet paper, there's like a, a core to it. <laughs> she just wanted to paint those, but not multicolored. Like she was making one that was red and she was so sure and it was so deep that she wanted this thing to be red. And it was just a very moving thing, very small, but you know, um, you know, that was enough, I thought. That was like enough for me. You know, I was very affected by that. And, and you know, that stuff goes on all the time, all through the day. So what adds something to the world's that it needs or wants or wishes for. I, I don't know. Uh, and in a way, it's not my job, I don't think, to assess maybe the value of what I do. If it comes from a deep place, you know, and, and it, it comes into being and I'm with it in a certain way and I'm certain, uh, like that for me is all good. And it's, it's sort of enough. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, it's a tricky question because, you know, a lot of people have these ideas of what art should be and how artists should be and what their commitment should be and all this sort of stuff. And I never know about, you know, I mean, I'm in doubt all the time, you know, um, mm -hmm. in my mind, which can get very negative in my mind, sometimes things aren't worth anything. Mm -hmm. When I make something is when they have some value, when they become objects and objects that are guided by a certain ongoing relationship. Uh, so in a way, abstractly, I, I don't know what this does. <laughs> I don't. It's a hard one, but yeah. when I make it yeah. and it exists and um, I've really signed off on it, then the question isn't even there anymore. Yeah, yeah it's interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's sort of, you know, uh, yeah, that's kind of, I guess that's my answer. I mean, if you ask me another day, I might say something different, you know. Exactly. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is normal, typical, usual, yes. I'm just winging it, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, well, that's, those are the three questions. And Tom Martinelli, thank you very much for sharing your creative imperative. Thank you very much for having me and for, for prompting me to speak. My pleasure.